Hello everyone, my name is Owen. And my name is Vivian. In classical guitar, there is a very special tone that sounds like a ring bell. That sound is called a harmonic. Harmonics are played in a very different way than what we would usually expect when we are playing regular notes. There are two types of harmonics, natural harmonics and artificial harmonics. In today's episode, we'll be talking about natural harmonics, and in our following episode, we're going to be talking about artificial harmonics. Before we show you guys how to play harmonics on the guitar, we must define what harmonics are. We've searched the entire internet to find the shortest but most detailed definition to explain what harmonics are. Give me 30 seconds to finish reading the sentence, then we can start to play. According to study.com, when a musical instrument is playing a note, what we are actually hearing is the fundamental pitch, which is the pitch being played by the instrument, accompanied by a series of frequencies that are usually heard as a single composite tone. Those frequencies that are integer multiples of the fundamental pitch's frequency are called harmonics. If a musician causes one of these harmonics to sound without sounding its fundamental frequency, it is called playing a harmonic. Or in short, it is the partials or overtone of a fundamental tone, from dictionary.com. What? You should have told me you found a shorter one! Well, I mean, trying to explain what harmonics are in one sentence is like trying to summarize how a black hole works. So, now that we have finished the hardest part of today, let's get to playing the ring bell tone and have some fun! Okay, first we'll show you how to play natural harmonics, also known as open string harmonics. The open string E is our fundamental E, which is also known as the first harmonic. If we play the same E string on the 12th fret, which is the middle of the string, then it is called the second harmonic. This will be an octave higher than the fundamental E. Unlike playing regular notes, where you will press down onto the fretboard with your pinky finger, with harmonics, your pinky finger will gently lay right on top of the fret and then you'll release as soon as you hear the note so that the note continues to ring and your right hand just plays as normally. Due to the way this type of harmonic is played, it is also called the left hand harmonics. So if we play all six strings together, then you will hear the octave higher notes from each open string. You will hear something like this. Let's play the third harmonic, which occurs on the 7th or the 19th fret. However, it is much more common for us to play the harmonic on the 7th fret because it is easier to get a clear sound. When we play here, the note will be an octave and a fifth higher than the open string. It will sound like this. The fourth harmonic happens at the one-fourth point of the entire string length, which is at the fifth fret or the middle of the sound hole. When we play at either spots, we will be receiving a note that is two octaves higher than the open string note. For example, if we are playing on the E string, the note we are going to be getting is two octaves higher than the open E note. This is what it will sound like if we play all six strings of the fifth fret. We can also play harmonics on the third and fourth fret, but more practice is needed to get a better tone. When we want to play harmonics on the fourth fret, play a little bit before the fret wire to get a clear sound. When we want to play on the third fret, Try to play a little bit after the fret wire to make the sound a little bit clearer. Now, we will be giving you guys three different easy practice pieces to practice your harmonics. The first one is the Sikas guitar intro music. To play this, you will have your left hand pinky resting right above the seventh fret. 
and with your right hand, you'll use your IMA fingers to play. Now repeat the same concept on the 12th fret. By adding both of these together, we create the Seekus guitar intro music. Our second practice piece is the clock tower bell tone. For this piece, we can use our left hand index finger to play all of the notes on the 7th fret, and for our pinky finger, we can play all of the notes on the 12th fret. If you want a more challenging piece, here's the little segment from the Viola Lobos Prelude No. 4. When you see a harmonic notation, you might be confused and have no clue what to do, but trust us, this is not your fault. Harmonic notation is like a new language that you don't understand yet, so to make life easier, we rewrote the whole entire music into a tab. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Hey, GFA TV! Time to get our arpeggio meditation on for the week. Last time we did arpeggio meditation, so it was really the first time, so the introduction. I introduced A M I P. A straight line closing towards the thumb presented the fact that I thought it was a pretty natural mechanic and also exposed you all to my ring finger nightmare that is a ridge in the middle of the nail uh, that I have to deal with all the time. All my nails really have to be dealt with all the time, whether it's daily filing, um, hourly maintenance. Um, I have a little crack now nursing on the inside of my thumbnail. That I'm going to have to keep an eye on, particularly as I also play with the pick. And sometimes when I'm holding the pick, I create problems. My nails are in okay shape today. I file them a little bit. They're not perfect quite yet. That would take me a little bit more time. But I usually do arpeggio meditations as part of this process. Warming up, waking up my ears, waking up my hands, waking up my musical soul, my creative person. And filing my nails and making sure they're in good shape for at least the next hour. So we worked with an E minor shape, kind of a reduced E minor shape. We had one fretted note. So I want to add a little something to this today to create, you know, just enough left hand movement to keep us kind of actively engaged in the now while we meditate. I ask that you think about your body, whether you're focusing on the sensation in the fingertips themselves, sensation of feeling the strings, the resistance of the strings, the tension of the strings. Maybe even my strings are a little tacky feeling this morning. Thinking about your shoulders. Are you someone who scrunches up one way or the other? Is it the way you're sitting with the instrument? I'm sitting with the instrument now in a way, we're using a support that allows me to go with no hands, pretty well balanced, so I can really loosen my shoulders. I don't have headphones on now. I'm sure I'll have headphones on again soon as I teach a lot on Zoom and virtually. I notice the weight of the headphones really impacts my neck a little bit. So as I'm doing my arpeggio meditations with headphones, I'm usually really loose at the neck and trying not to tighten up with that additional weight. Thinking about my lower back, am I in a good chair? Thinking about my legs. I mentioned in the first episode, I like to keep my feet flat on the ground and actually think about my feet. 
Am I up on my tiptoes on one? Am I scrunching around? I'm trying to lose all tension. And I mentioned breath patterns. Thinking about my breathing. Today, I'm gonna to add a couple of different notes in here. Give us some color, some little woos to listen to. So I'm gonna to continue to use only my ring finger, my third finger. I've taken this from the E minor voicing, but I'm not even gonna play the sixth or fifth string yet. We're not quite there yet. Just the top four strings, A, M, I, P. So I'm gonna release my second finger. Early on when I was playing, I had a pretty wild pinky. I still have a pretty wild pinky in my right hand. My left hand, I've slowly gotten under control. I'm still working on it. I'll always be working on it. A lot of it was awareness. Being aware of kind of the negative tension or non-productive tension. In this case, I'm going to use the pinky so that it keeps me busy. So I'm going to start by taking my pinky and moving it up to the first string, a high F sharp. So we've got a new color in this E minor now. Technically, that note's functioning as a ninth. But I can relax and move that pinky down to a C sharp. Now it's creating a sixth, a minor sixth chord. Or I can bring that pinky down. Now all of a sudden I've reconfigured into a suspended chord, an E sus chord. Each one of these has a lovely little ringing quality. and something that I'll enjoy listening to as I meditate AMI arpeggios. I'll start with the pinky on F sharp. See if you can catch when I move it. Now I'm awake. Hello, and welcome to UFA TV. My name is Rene Izquierdo. I'm a Cuban guitarist. I'm professor of guitar at the University of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. Um, I'm very glad to have you here today to talk about our sixth chapter of left hand fundamentals. So, so far, we have covered everything from position and make sure, making sure that when you play the third finger right before the fret and you're not pressing too hard, you're just making sure that the hand with weight obtains sound. So we did all kinds of exercises of walking on the ascending motion. Now, we will cover exercises in the descending fashion, which is a little harder. Why? Because our hands are designed to move this way, but it's a lot harder to move them out. So meaning when you're coming from the one to the four in this direction, let's say starting on the third string, it's a lot easier for adding the fingers than the opposite, which is opening the other way around. So we started to doing single fingers in ascending one and two, uh, one and two, I mean, sorry, open and one, open and two, open and three, open and four. Then uh, we did one and two, one and three, one and four, two, three, two, four, uh, two, three, three, four. So 
adjacent fingers, one, two, two, three, three, four, then non-adjacent, one, three, one, four, two, four, then we need combinations of three, one, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, four, two, three, four, and then we need combinations of four notes, one, two, three, four, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing descending. So starting walking, you know, find your position on th third finger, see where your first finger lies, you know, remember your thumb. If this is 12 o'clock, you're gonna be facing clockwise two o'clock. So it will be a little bit on the side. So your hand reaches. If it's flat, again, if your thumb is flat, then your hand will be lining up a little bit more like this. And then you will have to reach with the finger flat, completely reaching, which makes it very hard. Rather, if you put it at two o'clock, see how your hand immediately relaxes and gets this way. And remember, try not to grab here and then reach on the fourth finger, but rather come. Imagine that you're like a clarinet player here like this, and then you drop the hand. And that way, your fourth finger is closer rather than standing, okay? You can have some players have the position in which is a little bit of slanted this way rather than completely straight and it's okay as long as you find the natural position that's why we are doing all this walking so your fingers and your hand will start learning where does it feel comfortable for them okay so we start on descending now after you find your position with three and you put the first finger make sure you are right before the fret and you are not squeezing with the thumb and we're gonna do one open, so descending. Higher note first, then lower note second. Then second string first. Then we're gonna do second and open. Start second finger, then open string, and relax your hand, make sure you don't squeeze. Very light, make sure that you're not making any faces, uh, because the face is a reflection. If you have tension on your left hand, you will do all kind of faces while you're playing guitar. So, if you are relaxed, your face will be relaxed too. I need to move a little bit this closer to the fret so it creates cleaner sound. Then that was second finger. We went back to the third string. And now we're gonna do three and one on open. So three, open. Three open, three open, three open, very slow. One, this is it. You're releasing careful you don't get too far away from the guitar you just want to relax so your finger will barely lift see that that's it it's like one or two millimeters from the string versus this don't do this that would be too far well you can start doing this at the beginning to feel the movement but then make it smaller 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 until it's minimum the amount that you need to lift to get the sound of the open string this and then up then do four finger, four on the third string, open, four, open, first string, open, second string, open, second, third string, four, open, four string, open, fifth string, four finger, open, sixth string, four finger, open, the same, fifth, third, and then we can finish there. So, those exercises, starting the ascending motion, is very important to be very slow and coordinated, so your movement is a relaxing motion when you're lifting the fingers from the guitar, rather than an action and a directive that you're telling your fingers, lift, because then they will overdo the movement. It will be much greater than actually needed. So make sure that you're relaxing away from the guitar. 
three open, four open, relaxing away from the guitar. Okay? Thank you for listening and good luck with your exercises. do that dr v how can i help you chuck how do you play a d and a b at the same time which d and which b on the second string i'll take a picture and send it to you okay got it so do you know any other places to play these two notes i don't think so have you ever learned how to tune your guitar with the fifth fourth fret method yeah, like this. Well, then you know another location to play the B. Think about it. When you're tuning your guitar, where do you put your finger to tune the B string? Oh, I get it. I, I never thought about the names of those notes when I tune that way. This tuning method is a great way to begin to understand how to play your notes in other locations. Do you have any other cool tricks to, to figure out where your notes are in other locations on the guitar? Absolutely. But before I do, I'd like to teach you a way of thinking about specific notes using an octave identification system that my friend John Graham and I came up with. An octave identification system? So let me show you how this works. We're gonna start with the lowest note on the guitar, the open sixth string, which is E. We're going to call that E1. Now we're just going to go up the alphabet for the first octaves. We have E1, F1, G1, A1, B1, C1, D1. Well, the next letter would be E. This is going to be E2, starting the second octave. E2, F2, G2, A2. E3. And we'll go up from here. E3, F3, G3, A3, B3, C3, D3. Guess what? E4. And then we keep going. F4, G4, A4, B4. And some guitars have a C. Do other instruments do that? There's more than one octave identification system. But we came up with this idea because it seemed to make it easier to teach beginning guitar. Now, I'm really excited to learn my notes in other places. So what we're going to do is what I like to call open string references. And what that means is we're going to refer to the open strings to other locations all down the fingerboard. But let's start with the open strings. The open sixth string, E1. Fifth string, A1. Fourth string, D1. Third string, G2. Second string, B2, and the first string, E3. Now let's think about that tuning method that we just did. Well, if you play the open fifth string, A1. If you play the fifth fret on the sixth string, A1. If you play the fourth string open, that's D1. Play the fifth fret on the fifth string, D1. If you play the open third string, G2. Well, the fifth fret on the fourth string is also G2. If you play the open second string, B2. And if you play the fourth fret on the third string, B2. If you play the open first string, that's E3. And then at the second string, fifth fret, that's another E3. Now, if you think about this, both the sixth and the first string have the same letter name. This is E1. And this is E3. So they're two octaves apart. So if you think about it, when we started, we had the A1. Well, if this is A1, at the fifth fret, you'll have A3. Now let's refer our open strings to notes primarily on the seventh fret, one of them in the eighth. Now, just like with the fifth fret method, we were comparing notes on adjacent strings. We're going to do kind of the same thing in the opposite direction when it comes to the seventh fret. So we're going to play the open sixth string, E1, and compare it to the seventh fret on the fifth string. That's E2. It's an octave higher. Let's play the open fifth string, A1, and then 
you'll have a two at the seventh fret on the fourth string. We play the D1 as the open fourth string. You'll find the D2, seventh fret, on the third string. And now this is where we have that little cork where we go to another fret. So we're gonna play the open third string, which is G2. You're gonna find the G3 on the eighth fret. And then we're gonna have the open second string, which is a B2. And you're gonna find the B3 at the seventh fret on the first string. Now, just like we had before, because the sixth and first strings have the same letter names, if this is a B3, well, B1 is the seventh fret on the sixth string. And now the easiest reference of them all, the open strings to the 12th fret. Why is it easy? Because the 12th fret notes have the same exact names as the open strings, just an octave higher. So we have E1 is the open sixth string, 12th fret, E2. The open fifth string, A1, 12th fret, A2. Open fourth string, D1, 12th fret, D2. Open third, G2, 12th fret, G3. Open second string, B2, 12th fret, B3. Open first, E3, 12th fret, E4. Now that we've worked our way up to the 12th fret, something really cool happens. The guitar basically just starts all over again. So let's say we highlighted this area. We're gonna take the open strings up to the eighth fret and we just copied and pasted it and we put it over here at the 12th fret. You would find the exact same note relationship except an octave higher. Well, Chuck, I think you have a better understanding of how the fingerboard is laid out now so you should be able to play that piece. I think I can play this now.